Nicholas II was the last Tsar of Russia. With his wife Alex of Hesse, later Alexandra Fedorovna, he had four daughters, Olga, Tatiana, Maria and Anastasia, and one son, Alexei. This video will focus on his children. Grand Duchess Olga was the first child born to the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, and his wife, Alexandra Fedorovna, born Alex of Hesse. She was born on the 15th of November 1895 after a very difficult delivery in which the doctor had to use forceps to deliver Olga. Her parents were not disappointed to have a daughter. Nicholas even stated, I am glad that our child is a girl. Had it been a boy, he would have belonged to the people. Being a girl, she belongs to us. In 1896, Nicholas and Alexandra took Olga with them on their travels to Europe. On this occasion, Olga met her great-grandmother and godmother, Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom, at Balmoral Castle. She loved both of her parents dearly, but she idolised her father and often wore a necklace with an icon of Saint Nicholas. Olga grew up to become an extremely kind and highly intelligent young woman. She loved studying and she was especially interested in politics and read the newspaper daily. She was a talented musician and played the piano skillfully. Her relationship with her mother was strained. Growing up, Olga was famous for her quick temper and moodiness, which often led to conflict with her mother. Alexandra was very strict with Olga as she was the eldest of the siblings and she expected the young Grand Duchess to always act appropriately and to be an example for her younger siblings. Other family members thought Alexandra's expectations were unreasonable. Alexandra would also blame Olga for her younger brother Alexei's inappropriate behaviour. Olga was keen on helping others. When she turned 20, she took over control of a portion of her fortune and personally started responding to charity requests. On one occasion, when she was out for a ride, she saw a young child using crutches. She stopped the carriage to ask about the child and learned that his parents were too poor to afford the treatment. She set aside an allowance to cover all the medical bills. A court official described Olga's character as angelic. As Olga reached the age of marriage, her possible future husbands were widely discussed. Some men considered for Olga were George, Crown Prince of Serbia, Prince Boris of Bulgaria, Edward, Prince of Wales, and Prince Carol of Romania. Olga refused to leave Russia for any man and rejected any marriage proposals. Her father had promised Olga that he would never force her to marry anyone that she did not want to marry. Olga and her sisters were always surrounded by guards, and in late 1913, Olga fell in love with one of them, Pavel Yurinov. She knew that she would never be able to marry him. Back when Olga was 15, she and her sister Tatiana visited the opera house in Kiev with their father. Sadly, they were witnesses to the assassination of Peter Stolopin. This event left both sisters deeply traumatised. During the First World War, Olga and Tatiana trained to be Red Cross nurses and started treating wounded soldiers. The sisters, until then, had lived very sheltered lives and were amazed to meet other people. They enjoyed talking to the soldiers and learning more about them. At first, Olga thoroughly enjoyed her work, but over time she grew increasingly upset and distraught after seeing so many wounded and dying men. Because of this, she was assigned for office work in the hospital and had to be treated with arsenic injections. At the hospital, Olga fell in love with the wounded soldier Dmitry Chakbakov. She would often talk to him and was depressed when he had to leave the hospital. There was no hope for marriage between them as it was inappropriate for a Grand Duchess to marry a commoner. Grand Duchess Tatiana Nikolaevna of Russia was born on the 10th of June 1897. Her birth was difficult and her mother relied on chloroform to get through the birth and was unconscious during the birth. The doctor used forceps to deliver Tatiana. Alexandra woke up to worried faces and knew what had happened. 
She had given birth to another daughter instead of the awaited heir. Though her parents were disappointed by her sex, they loved her dearly. Tatiana was close to her older sister Olga. Together they were known as the big pair. They shared a bedroom in which they slept on camp beds without pillows. This was due to their parents wanting them to grow up as simple as possible. When Tatiana was asked for her name, she never added her style nor title and always called herself Tatiana Nikolaevna. Tatiana is said to have resembled her mother the most not only in looks but also in personality. Just like Alexandra, Tatiana was deeply religious and always had a Bible with her to read. Alexandra doted on Tatiana and she is said to have been Alexandra's favourite daughter. Tatiana was a natural leader and at the age of 15 she was given the rank of honorary colonel and was assigned a regiment of soldiers. Together with her sister Olga, she inspected the soldiers often and was heavily patriotic and anti-German. On several occasions, Tatiana had to apologise to her mother for making negative comments about Germany, as Alexandra was German. Tatiana and her siblings lived a very sheltered life. They grew up far away from public life. Tatiana was shocked to hear that her governess earned money for taking care of her, having believed that the governess cared for her out of the goodness of her heart. One day, Tatiana and Olga went out for a carriage ride and stopped at a shopping street. They had no idea how to buy anything or how money even worked. Growing up at court all her life also left Tatiana in shock at how some of the soldiers acted. One time when they were aboard the Imperial yacht, one of the officers gave Olga a copy of Michelangelo's David. Tatiana was appalled and wrote to her grandmother about the scandalous behaviour of the soldier. Tatiana was believed to have been the most beautiful of the four grand duchesses. Some described her beauty as mystical and this was known around the other European courts. It also made her a desirable bride and King Peter I of Serbia wanted Tatiana as a bride for his younger son, Prince Alexander. But Tatiana had no interest in marriage at the time. Tatiana had an interest in fashion. She was talented in embroidery and crocheting and was a fantastic hairdresser. She loved to do her mother's hair. During the First World War, Tatiana and her sister Olga worked as nurses. Tatiana was devoted towards her work as a nurse and was named the patron of a work aid committee called Tatiana's Committee. Tatiana often felt like her work as a nurse wasn't enough while Russian men were fighting at the fronts. While working as a nurse, Tatiana fell in love for the first time with an officer named Dmitry Yalakovich Malama. According to one source, they began a romantic relationship with each other, although it is debated how far this relationship went. Dmitry gave Tatiana a French bulldog which she named Ortipo. When Ortipo died, Dmitry gifted Tatiana with another puppy which died with her at Yekaterinburg. Dmitry visited the family in 1916 and he left a good impression on the Serena who thought of him as the perfect son-in-law. However, marriage between the two would never be possible as Dmitry was a commoner and Tatiana a grand duchess. Dmitry died while fighting with the White Army against the Bolsheviks in 1919. Grand Duchess Maria Nikolaevna of Russia was born on the 26th of June 1899. Her family and the country were disappointed that another daughter had been born into the imperial royal family. Alexandra Fedorovna was unpopular in Russia and she was devastated at not giving birth to a son. Nicholas reassured her that he was happy to have another daughter. Maria grew up quite simply. She preferred to be called Maria Nikolaevna without any titles or styles. She was close to her younger sister, Anastasia, and they were known as the little pair. Together, the four sisters were known as Otma. When Anastasia was causing trouble or playing pranks on the people at court, Maria was the one who would apologise for Anastasia's behaviour. Maria was the quieter one out of her siblings. She dreamed of one day having a big family and was obsessed with soldiers. 
She loved looking outside the window at the guards passing by. She even hoped that one day she would marry a guard or a soldier, but she knew this was highly unlikely due to her rank. When Maria was 11, she fell in love with one of the young men around her. She received a letter from her mother telling her to hide her feelings as others might say unkind things to her or about her. Maria was taller and stronger than most girls her age. Reportedly, she was able to lift her tutors off the ground. The young Grand Duchess of Beauty was widely known across Europe. Her cousin Louis Mountbatten fell deeply in love with Maria and he kept a photo of her by his bedside until his death in 1979. Another man interested in Maria was Prince Carol of Romania. After being rejected by Maria's older sister Olga, Carol asked for Maria's hand in marriage in 1917. Nicholas declined as he thought that Maria was too young to marry, and Maria was not keen on marrying at the time. Maria was polite, kind, and never got into trouble. Her sisters would often take advantage of this. On one occasion, her sister Olga persuaded her to ask their mother to give Olga her own room and to be given Alexandra's old dresses. Maria could sometimes be stubborn, lazy and grumpy, and was not very interested in schoolwork. However, she was interested in drawing and sketching, which she always did with her left hand. During the First World War, Maria was too young to work as a nurse, so she and Anastasia would visit the soldiers in hospital and play checkers or billiards with them. Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna of Russia was born on the 18th of June 1901. Disappointment at her birth was not hidden by anyone. Alexandra Fedorovna was devastated. Nicholas could not hide his disappointment any longer and went for a long walk before visiting his newborn daughter for the first time. Anastasia and her siblings were raised as simply as possible. They all slept on camp beds with pillows and took cold showers in the morning. Anastasia resembled her mother's side of the family more than her father's side. She was not as tall as her other sisters and she was way less concerned about her appearance. Often she would eat food in public with her gloves still on. Out of all of her siblings, Anastasia was the most energetic. She would often climb trees and refuse to come down. The Grand Duchess did not follow rules and would often make witty remarks that could hurt people. Her pranks were well known in court. Most of the time they were funny, but sometimes they went too far. One time when it was snowing, Anastasia rolled a rock into a snowball and threw it at her sister Tatiana, knocking her to the ground. Anastasia wasn't always in good health. She suffered from painful bunions and had a weak back muscle. On the 12th of August 1904, the long-awaited Sevich was born, Alexei Nikolaevich. The family and the court were delighted, as was Nicholas's younger brother, Michael, the previous heir to the throne, at being released from being heir. Alexei was immediately named Sevich as heir apparent to the Russian throne, but the happiness would soon be overshadowed. It was discovered shortly after birth that Alexei suffered from haemophilia, a genetic condition in which the blood doesn't clot properly. When Alexei's umbilical cord was cut, he bled continuously. Alexandra Fedorovna recognised the symptoms immediately. His parents worried he would not recover, but he did. As Alexei grew up, it became clear that Alexei had a severe form of the disease. A small cut or bruise could be life-threatening. Alexei took after his mother in Lux. He was taller than other boys his age. Alexei's childhood was deeply marked by haemophilia. Due to his constant attacks, his education was often interrupted and it sometimes took weeks for him to recover. In 1907, Alexei hurt his leg while playing. His leg swelled and most around him thought he would die but he recovered. Grigory Rasputin, a peasant monk from Siberia who claimed to have mystical powers, stood in front of Alexei's bed and prayed for him. 
The next morning, his swelling magically disappeared, and Alexei was up in his bed as if nothing had happened. In 1912, Alexei sat with his mother on a ride. The bumpy pathway caused the hematoma from an earlier accident to rupture and start bleeding again. Alexei soon fell unconscious as his temperature rose and his heart rate dropped. Within days, Alexei was receiving the last sacrament and the newspapers were reporting that Alexei was dying. In her desperation, Alexandra sent a telegram to Rasputin who advised her to not let the doctors touch Alexei. The next morning, the impossible seemed to happen. Alexei was getting better and over the next few weeks, he fully recovered. In 1914, the First World War broke out and the following year, Alexei was allowed to join his father at army headquarters. Alexei spent long hours in meetings, preparing to one day become the next Tsar of Russia. Alexei enjoyed military life and was later given the title of Lance Corporal. When Alexei was six years old, he walked into his father's office where the foreign minister was waiting on Nicholas. He remained seated and Alexei yelled at him that as heir to the Russian throne, when he enters the room, people have to get up. Alexei was spoilt by his parents and was rarely punished for his behaviour. Nicholas went on to name his son Alexei the Terrible. From a young age, Alexei was fond of everything that had to do with the army. He would attend army inspections with his father and always wore a miniature military uniform and carried his wooden rifle with him. His mother forbade him from doing simple things like riding a bike and playing tennis due to the haemophilia. Alexei therefore was often lonely. While Nicholas was the only one Alexei obeyed, he also noticed that he could no longer keep Alexei under control and so he ordered that his son should be allowed to do the same things others his age were doing. Growing up, Alexei was close to his sisters, especially his oldest sister, Olga. Alexei was the baby of the family and his parents' joy. Following the Russian Revolution of 1917 and the abdication of Tsar Nicholas II, the whole family were arrested and put under house arrest. During their captivity, Olga was the one who tried to encourage her family to keep faith, despite her own mental health worsening. During house arrest, she started writing poems. Some of the poems outlined how she felt about the situation they were in. During her time in captivity, Olga received a revolver from her father, which she hid. Eventually, she was caught by one of the guards. Sympathetic to her, he pleaded with her to give up the revolver and nothing would happen to her, which she did. The strict house arrest and uncertainty about her family's future took its toll on Tatiana. The already slim Tatiana lost a lot of weight due to the circumstances. The house arrest took its toll on Anastasia, but she tried to find ways to entertain herself in her last few months of life. The sisters would often perform plays for their parents to keep them entertained. Anastasia's performances would always make everyone laugh. While imprisoned, Alexei would often complain that he was bored and allowed to play with the kitchen boy named Leonid. In spring 1918, the family were transferred to Ekaterinburg. The Tsar Serena and Maria moved first, followed by the rest due to Alexei having fallen ill. Tatiana and her younger sisters got friendly with the guards, asking them about their families and Tatiana was talking about her new life in England when they would be released. After Yakov Yurovsky took command over the family, they were held under even stricter conditions and were forbidden from joking with the guards. Tatiana, who still considered herself to be the leader of the royal children, was often sent to ask the guards about the rules or their future. Tatiana spent most of her time with her mother and her brother. She read to them and played games with them to pass the long hours of captivity. He spent his final months confined to a wheelchair. On the night of the 16th of July 1918, the family were awoken and taken to the basement. Two chairs were given to Alexandra and Alexei to sit on. Sometime later, in the early hours of the 17th of July, 1918, Yakov Yurovsky, the chief executioner, entered the room and read them their death sentences. 
The Tsar, Tsarina and their two servants died immediately. Maria tried to escape through the doors at the rear end of the room, but they were locked. She was hit by a bullet in her thigh and fell to the ground next to her sister Anastasia. Olga and Tatiana crouched against the room's rear wall, clinging to each other and screaming for their mother, who was already dead by this time. One of the guards approached the sisters with a bayonet, but failed to wound them due to the jewels they had sewn into their clothes. Tatiana was shot in the back of her head by Yurovsky. Only a few moments later, Olga died after a shot into her jaw. Alexei was in shock and could do nothing but sit in his chair. Guards tried stabbing him with their bayonets. When nothing seemed to work, Yurovsky shot him in the head twice. Anastasia and Maria had to witness their siblings being murdered, as they were the last to survive and had crouched up against a wall covering their heads. What happened next is not entirely clear. It is most likely that Maria or Anastasia were knocked unconscious and woke up while their bodies were being carried out. They started screaming and were silenced. The bodies were buried nearby and were not found until decades later. This left room for imposters to pop up, claiming to be one member of the family or another. Margot Boots claimed she was Grand Duchess Olga Nikolaevna. Author Michael Ackleshaw claimed Grand Duchess Tatiana Nikolaevna survived the night and was rescued, travelled to England where she married a British officer and lived under the name of Larissa Tudor. A woman named Anna Anderson might be the most famous imposter of all. She appeared in 1920 and claimed that she was Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna. She reported that she survived the execution and was still breathing while being carried out. A guard noticed this and took sympathy upon her. Eventually, the bodies of all the family members were discovered. But the bodies of Maria and Anastasia could not be identified. Some experts claimed one of the bodies was Maria and the other was Anastasia, while others said the opposite. Up until this day, it is uncertain which body belongs to Anastasia and which one belongs to Maria. The two bodies found in 2007, the bodies of Alexei and either Maria or Anastasia, are still awaiting their burial. In 2000, the family were canonised as passion bearers by the Russian Orthodox Church. Earlier in 1991, the family was canonised by the Russian Orthodox Church abroad as holy martyrs. Exactly 80 years after the murders, Nicholas, Alexandra and three of their daughters were buried in St. Petersburg.